Hi there, Smart Drivers. Rick with Smart Drive Test talking to you tonight about traffic signs. And you know what we say about traffic signs. Traffic signs are to driving what instructions are to an Ikea cabinet. And we'll explain that more. Stick around. We'll be right back with that information. I had the joke and the punchline, and it all went wrong with the click of the transition there. But, you know, here we are. Corey's here, Bricks for Wheels. He's the moderator in blue there. Uh, my, my friend Mallory's here as well, and a few other people are here. But they're kind of in the background and lurking and not leaving us a comment. But uh, we'll get going here on traffic signs. <laughs> you know, that's the thing about telling a joke is you got to be able to tell the joke and then just kind of walk away and kind of, you know, have that big pause and that big dramatic, <laughs> there's the joke kind of thing. My friend DC is here. Hello, my friend. How are you? So we're going to talk about uh, traffic signs. We're going to talk about how to uh, read those, glean that information from, some, from the traffic signs at a glance because that's what you want to be able to do because it'll make you a safer, smarter driver when you're driving down on the roadway and also allow you to uh, interpret traffic patterns and predict the individual movements of road users on the roadway. And the reason I say road users is because it's not just you and other cars, it's you and pedestrians and you and cyclists and uh, people on scooters and those types of things. So there's a lot going on when you're driving and traffic signs and reading traffic signs and being able to glean that information at a glance is really going to be able to help you out. We're going to talk about a few other things. I'm going to do a presentation. Of course, after the presentation, we're going to come back and we'll dedicate the remainder of the time to answering your questions about passing a driver's test, being a safer, smarter driver, or earning your license and starting a career as a bus or truck driver. Got a few other interesting things to do to talk about as well. Uh, as you know, last week I was in Brooklyn, New York, did some filming with my friend Sam. Uh, he's not with that driving school anymore, but he's still a driving instructor. Uh, we did some videos and really great videos. Uh, you know, I learned a lot. <laughs> uh, got distracted a little bit while I was there because of, you know, double park cars and whatnot. And, uh, you know, so that was interesting. So we're looking forward to getting those videos up for you. Did get one up last week. So have a look at that. Uh, who else is here? Casa. Excellent. Jackson, my friend, how are you? Kyle, uh, 10 days till my test. Now I'm excited, but nervous. Awesome. Ari's here. Abigail is here. I passed, but still watching you. And we're so happy to have you here, Abigail. Still watching. That's excellent. Senorita Mona, I passed my exam. I'm driving now. Your videos and lives improved me a lot. Uh, your advice to take snow brush in winter. Yes, Canada. And Mona, next week we're going to be doing a uh, live stream on winter driving. So we'll be able to help you out with that. And Johnny is here from Toronto. Excellent. Trudes Brown, hello, my friend. How are you? So we'll do the presentation. We'll get over to the presentation here. Just let me get my transition. Here we go. So we'll do this to be about 10 minutes, 12 minutes to do the presentation. We'll come back and we'll answer any questions. A couple other things I want to talk about as well tonight. And we'll talk about that. So let's get going here talking about road signs tonight. And for those of you new to Smart Drive Test, my name is Rick August. Uh, I drove truck in the 1990s. Hit a little brain cramp there for just a sec. I uh, became a licensed commercial driving instructor in 1997. Most of my experience teaching people how to drive uh, is with uh, tractor trailers, air brakes. That's my expertise. 2006, I graduated from the University of Melbourne for, uh, for with a doctorate in legal history, study of policing, courts, and prisons. My expertise in, is in policing as it relates to traffic, oddly enough. While I was going to university, drove buses for Greyhound and uh, one of the regional bus lines in Australia. And Australians are fond of saying that they founded Greyhound, never really pursued that to see whether that was true or not, but that's what they say. And in 2015, started the Smart Drive Test YouTube channel and the online business. It's been wildly more successful than I could have imagined. 
Uh, you want to know more information about me and the online business, you can read my autobiography over at the Smart Drive Test website, and Corey will put up that link for you. It's really awesome. Trudes Brown, we're really happy to hear that you're good. Uh, so this week, uh, the new video is double parked, and uh, <laughs> it's a matter of course in New York and the five boroughs there, uh, Manhattan, Staten Island, Brooklyn, Queens, the Bronx, uh, for cars to be double parked. And this is just something that you have to deal with as part and parcel of your driver's test. And I'm going to talk a little bit about distracted driving uh, after the presentation here and give you a little information about that. <laughs> because I was distracted by the double parked cars and I'll tell you why. So stick around after the presentation, we'll talk about distracted driving and why double, double parked cars, uh, you know, distracted me when I was driving around in the Bronx there. So, uh, yeah. Okay, so the three ways that traffic signs convey information is the shape of the sign, the colors on the sign and the words or symbols thereon. Those are the ways that these traffic signs convey information to you. Regulatory signs, cautionary signs, uh, lane usage signs, school zone signs, school zone signs. Uh, there's a video here, Corey will put that up for you, which is uh, telling you that school zone signs are the most inconsistent of all of the traffic signs. Most of the other ones are according to uh, traffic engineers in the world and there's classifications. So regulatory signs include stop signs, railway crossing signs, yield signs, speed signs. Those are all regulatory. Speed signs and other regulatory signs tend to be rectangular in shape with a white background, black lettering and black symbols. Those are regulatory signs. Railway crossings, which is the cross buck, that is also a regulatory sign. Uh, school speed zone signs are regulatory and if you speed in a school zone for the purposes of your driver's test you will not be successful on your test so know that object marker signs these are all cautionary signs and then there's directional signs which tell you what uh, state road you're on or which interstate or freeway uh, so all of that lots and lots of different classifications of sign if you look in your driver's handbook for your state or province you will find the different classifications of traffic signs and know these, then this, this will help you out. Probably the most prolific of the traffic signs are the cautionary signs giving you information about the roadway and conditions that are going to change as you're moving along the roadway. For example, there's a bend ahead, there's a drawbridge ahead, uh, the pavement goes to gravel. These are all cautionary signs. The most prolific sign on our roadways is the object marker sign, which indicates that there is a fixed object along the roadway that you have the potential of running into and crashing into. Uh, light standards, concrete islands, the ed uh, ends of bridges, all of these will have the object marker signs and Corey will put up the video for you on object marker signs and these will tell you to pass to the right, to pass to the left or you can pass on either the left or the right and the way that you think of it is, is that you can see the chevrons or the lines on the object marker sign. It's, it's rectangular in shape, tall and skinny, and it has lines on it pointing in one direction. And just think of it like a kettle pouring water onto the dashes. The direction that the water runs off is the side that you will pass the fixed object on on the roadway. And these are very important if you get into bigger vehicles, driving pickup trucks or getting a CDL license or you're pulling a trailer, you need to know what these hazard obstruction signs mean and on which side to pass so that you can remain safe and not crash into something. Regulatory signs. The root word of regulatory is regulation. Regulation means the law, that it's in legislation and these signs must be obeyed. Con an action contrary to a regulatory sign is one of the infractions on a driver's test and if you incur this infraction it's an automatic fail on a driver's test so stop signs if you roll and blow through stop signs on a driver's test that's an automatic fail and as we know stop signs are uh, octagon in shape eight-sided and they have the words stop on them they're red in color very easy to spot along our roadways unless they're hidden behind bushes and buildings and those types of things Speed signs, rectangular, square, they have a white background, black border, black lettering, and they tell you the speed limit that you're allowed to travel. And for the purposes of a driver's test, it's the posted speed limit or the flow of traffic, whichever is less. 
railway crossings, brake check signs for those driving CDL commercial vehicles. If you're driving a bus or a truck, you must obey brake check signs. You must go into the brake check area, check your brakes before proceeding down the hill. If you blow past a brake check sign driving a CDL vehicle, uh, the diesel bears will get you. They will come after you and, <laughs> and pull you over and give you a fine. Intersection signs. It's important to know where intersections are and what kind of intersection you are dealing with. We know as traffic safety authorities that 40%, more than 40% of crashes happen at intersections. So we have conventional intersections, which is your cross intersection. And then you have T intersections, roundabouts, Y intersections, offset intersections roadways that intersect with railway crossings. These are all different types of intersections, intersections that end. So know that, know your different intersection signs if you can be predictable on the roadway and be noticing where the road, uh, the uh, intersection signs are. Take note of the intersection, scanning and mapping the intersection as you're approaching it. It's going to significantly reduce your chances of being involved in a crash. So identify intersections to be a safer, smarter driver. Cautionary signs, these are warning signs. They give you information about how the roadway is going to change or there is some characteristic of the roadway which you know. For commercial drivers, those drivers graduating to a bus or a truck, you must know that in the United States of America, the maximum height is 13 feet, six inches. So if you go under this bridge, which is 11 feet, eight inches, you're going to turn your vehicle into a convertible. And when you do that, your employer gets very upset <laughs> because they're not designed to be convertibles. They're designed to have the roof left on them. Some of these are more relevant than others and some are not, okay? There are a lot of speed signs, cautionary speed signs on off ramps of highways and freeways, for example, that it's a recommended speed. And you know, once you get used to what the on off ramp is and those types of things, you can go a little bit faster. But I can't say that you can. You need to figure this kind of information out on your own. And it's, it's part of the reason that a lot of drivers tend not to pay attention to road signs because so much of the information I would argue is irrelevant to what's going on right away. So for example, curve signs of 45 miles an hour. I mean, you might be able to go around this curve at up to 50 miles an hour, 60 miles an hour even, if you have yourself a high-end sports car. Uh, but in a large commercial vehicle, I do encourage you and recommend to you that you do obey these cautionary signs until you get some experience with that part of the roadway to be absolutely sure that you're going to go around and you're going to keep it with the rubber side down, which means that you're not going to flip it over like a, you know, not going to flip it over, period. Larger vehicles. Some of the signs that become very important, and I see that Corey's put up the 11 critical signs for CDL bus and truck drivers. Have a look at that video for more information about traffic signs for sure. Uh, larger vehicles, destination signs become important. How far is it from your destination? How far is it from the next town? Because you need to know this information to have an ETA, an estimated time of arrival for you to give dispatch so that they can get you the next load and keep you moving up and down the roadway. Overhead signs, we just talked about overhead signs. How high is your vehicle? 13 feet, six inches in the United States, 4.15 meters in Canada. If you're crossing back and forth, you're going to have to know both those numbers, 4.15 meters, 13 feet, 6 inches. Okay, match the speed, posted speed limit or the flow of traffic, both for larger vehicles and for those of you taking your driver's test. Lane usage signs, and these be, are important so that you are in the correct lane. If you want to go straight through the intersection, you can't be in one of the turning lanes. For example, the sign at the top, if you're in the left lane, you can only turn left and you're going to have to turn left <laughs> if you accidentally get in that lane. Uh, very important for large vehicles. They're also important in the spring when the road markings become scraped off because of the snow and the plowing and you know road maintenance in the wintertime and those types of things. It's really, really hard on the road markings, so you're going to have to look at the signs overhead. Uh, larger vehicles and make sure that you're in the correct turning lane if you're pulling a trailer. 
Uh, you want to be in the outside lane. That's going to be a lot easier for you to get around the corner in a larger vehicle, especially if you're in a truck and trailer. Mile marker signs. A lot of people don't really know what these are. <laughs> so take note of the uh, mile marker signs for precise location. And also, if you're listening to your GPS and they tell you to get off at exit 83, you're at exit 80, you know that you have three miles to go up the road before you have to get off the roadway. So if you take note of mile markers, these will keep you safer on the roadway because it's an excellent, excellent defensive driving strategy. Because if you get in behind beside a big vehicle and you're stuck out in the middle lane or something, can I get over? Do I have time to kind of pull in beside, behind this vehicle or get in front of it? you know how far exactly how far it is to your next exit. Now, if you're driving in the state of New York, <laughs> their exit numbers do not line up with their mile markers, so know that. Also, if you're on the, uh, the uh, expressway, the New York expressway, that it's a long distance between exits. They give whole new meaning to limited access highway. That's what freeways are called, limited access highways. And Corey's put up the video for you there on how to navigate interstates and freeways. Thanks for that, Corey. So exit numbers are also mile markers too. So you can see on the uh, image there at the top, exit 57, exit 57 and the mile marker line up. So most states except New York, <laughs> New York being the exception, the mile markers and the exit numbers are one and the same thing. All right, so good luck on your driver's test. And remember, pick the best answer not necessarily the right answer. Transition back over here, and Corey's put up all those videos. Mallory says our road signs are the same in every country or different in every country. No, Mallory, most of the driving signs are the same in every country. There are obviously some nuances between different places, uh, and there are different speed limits, which I found out also in the Bronx, that was the other thing that was different, was that the speed limit was 25 miles per hour in the city, which kind of threw me at the beginning because I was, you know, after you've been experienced and driving for a while, you know what 30 miles an hour feels like when you're driving. And uh, <laughs> there were a couple of times I was speeding quite a bit, you know, probably closer to 35 miles an hour as opposed to 25 miles an hour, which I should have been doing. So it took me, it took me 15 minutes to kind of, okay, I'm speeding and to consciously get myself to 25 miles an hour. So Yes, the signs are more or less the same, but there are some slight differences. And as I said, school signs are the least consistent of all of the signs. They can be blue, they can be neon green. Uh, I've seen them yellow. Uh, you know, they're all kinds of different colors. So the school signs are the least consistent of all the signs. My friend Blessed, how are you? Uh, everyone is still watching your channel, live streams uh, being always helpful. Also, wash my Honda Fit with gold and glass shampoo and conditioner from Meguiar's. Thank you so much, and that is awesome. How is your Honda Fit? I bet you, I bet you it looks just shiny, sparkly clean <laughs> with those awesome products that you got there from Meguiar's. Because I do really, my personally, I really like those uh, those products from Meguiar. So, uh, probably something I need to put on. I'm trying to put a video together on. Uh, Christmas gifts, you know, Christmas gifts for the car owner and Meguiar uh, cleaning products is probably some of the stuff I should put on the uh, 10 things you can buy for the car buff for Christmas. Uh, shampoo, I'm just writing this down here so I don't forget. There we go. Awesome. Well, I'm glad that you got it all shiny clean. Con, uh, when turning a school bus left or right and there's a lane of traffic next to you moving past at the same time, you're turning. Should you wait for a gap before making the turn? Uh, it depends, Con. It's going to depend on your tail swing because, as you know, school buses have quite a bit of tail swing. So you're going to have to, when you go left or right, you know, obviously right, you're going to get a lot more tail swing than you will to the left because it's a lot sharper. So you're going to have to be very conscious of looking in the mirrors and going slow so that you can figure out where the tail swing is going on the back of the bus because you gotta realize it's gonna swing out a fair bit. And the reason, for those of you who don't know that much about school buses, the reason you have a fair bit of tail swing is because you have a very long school body. 
uh, yeah, this one's this is not, this is not a good representation. Normally, what on school buses, this is not an accurate depiction of a school bus. Normally, the back wheels are here, halfway up the body of the bus, and you get a fair bit of swing because what happens is, is this is the fulcrum around which the bus turns, and so you get a lot of tail swing on the back. So when you turn, uh, especially if you're moving out from a curb, you really got to watch that tail swing on the back of the vehicle uh, when you're driving school buses. So I just noticed that now that I was talking about swing on school buses, that that's not a very good rep representation of the swing uh, when you're turning left or right. Uh, where did uh, my friend go? There we go. Nick, watching from Jamaica. You're a great instructor. Thank you so much, my friend, for the compliment. And we're so happy to hear we can help you out. That is really great. Gary, tips on driving on a freeway that's very congested and tips on not getting cut off. Uh, maintain your space in front. Make sure you've got that three to four second following distance in front. Yes, other some other drivers are going to move into that space, but that's okay. Uh, that's okay that they move into that space. Just keep maintaining that space in front of you. That's really going to help you out, especially in congestion. Uh, if you need to change lanes, like I say to smart drivers, if you want to change lanes, just put your signal on, keep your signal on. And just crowd the side of the lane. Like if you're going to want to move left, crowd the left side of the lane until somebody lets you in. Somebody eventually will let you in, okay? And uh, again, watch the live stream from last week where I was in Brooklyn. And I actually talked about driving in big cities, driving congestion. That will help you out a little bit as well. <laughs> and Blessed said that her Honda Fit is very shiny. And that is awesome. Uh, I also like the wax uh, from Meguiar's as well. That's also a very good product uh, for your vehicle as well. Okay, uh, three things on the driving test. Jim, what is the hardest three things on the driving test? Uh, Jim, the, the driving test is fairly straightforward, but I would say that students have the biggest challenges with shoulder checking. So that's the first thing. The, uh, and then overall is observation. Okay, so those are the two, two big things. And then, so shoulder checking is number one. Number two would be your slow speed maneuvers because seven eighths of the road test is in a forward motion, but that one eighth of the road test of parallel parking, backing into a parking space and three point turns gives students a lot of grief. So that's number two. And then uh, number three would be just the nerves. Okay, getting your nerves calmed down. Notice, you just just know that you know you gotta go into it. If you can hold it together for the first two or three minutes of the driver's test, it's probably gonna go pretty well after that. But if you can pull off the first three minutes, and the other thing that I say to students is make sure you back into the space if you can, uh, it, unless signs prohibit it, then that way you can just drive out and you can get going and do what you need to do and those types of things. Now, again, Sam took me to the test center where they do the driver's tests in the Bronx and it's not really a test center. You don't even have to back into a parking space. It's along the side of the road. You just pull up, the examiner comes out, gets in the car and away you go. So uh, some places you're not gonna have to back into a parking space, but do be able to have that skill under your belt as well as power parking in three point turns. Those are the minimum three skills that you're gonna have to do for a driver's test, all right? A, B, uh, what would the reason be the MTO added 10 more questions to each test after all these years? Uh, a, B, I don't know. I can't, I can't give you an answer to that. But uh, so instead of having, are you saying that now for the theory test for the learners, instead of having 50 questions, they now have 60 questions, is that correct? Engineer, hey Rick, uh, your vids are a huge help. I have a road test this week. One question I have, how to correct the steering wheel out of a turn when it does not straighten out on its own? Okay, so engineer, so most of the time, you know, you just open your fingers, keep your palms in contact with the steering wheel, it'll correct, but then you're gonna have to adjust a little bit at the end of the turn. So that's the way that you do that. Uh, Hood, uh, thanks for your excellent work. Could you do some broadcasts on driving in highway and explain Toronto collectors and uh, mean exits, uh, how to get messed up on these different signs. Okay, uh, Hood, actually, absolutely. Next time I'm in Toronto, I never even thought about that the last time I was in Toronto, that I should do some videos on that. 
and collector lanes in Toronto and on the 401 because Toronto is is different it's unique in that sense that it has through lanes and it has collector lanes and you need to get over onto the collector lanes so yes we'll definitely uh, do that as well uh, for you when I get there the next time stallion got my license three years ago still check out the streams and videos to keep my road knowledge sharp that's awesome thank you so much uh blessed do i have a video on maintaining your vehicle i want to keep my car as long as possible maintaining it not sure how to uh make maintenance and the basics and blessed uh that's an excellent suggestion i really need to do that for you now blessed is your car i'm pretty sure you bought your uh, honda fit brand new right because what I can do is, yeah, I can definitely do that and tell you the things that you need to do for a new, because if it's a, is it a 2020 or is it a 2021? Just let me know that. Uh, okay, excellent. Stallion, a lot of people getting their license and just throw everything out the window. Yeah, and that's unfortunate because there really should be a bit of uh, professional development there for sure. Trevor, uh, hey Rick, approaching my fifth driving lesson, but turning left or right is still not a fluid for me. Uh, Trevor, as I say, go back, go to the parking lot if you get an opportunity, get some of those one meter, three feet tall pylons and do some slow speed maneuvers and some exercises in the parking lot and that'll really help you out. Corey will put up the video for you on beginners and that'll help you out uh, to make your turns more fluid. But again, you know, just remember, it's gonna take a bit of practice for that to kind of work out, work itself out and whatnot. Okay, uh, Red, uh, Corey will put the video up for you on centering your vehicle in the lane. That'll help you out with that for sure. Okay, I was looking, uh, I got a car, my car off the park, a lot of barb. <laughs> Gary, I have the same thing. I parked mine under the trees and the, the kids were telling me today that I need to wash the buggy because there was a lot of bird poop on the hood. And yes, unfortunately, you park under a, under a tree, that's what's going to happen uh, with your vehicle. Uh, Colin, I have my G2 test in Ontario coming up on the 25th. Are there many slow speed maneuvers? Okay, so Colin, absolutely be ready for your test, backing into a parking space, parallel parking, and uh, three point turns. Let's fade there for a minute. So you get those three maneuvers, and then the other ones are at the discretion of the examiner, but you can be almost guaranteed that those are the three maneuvers that they're going to get you to do uh, on your driver's test. All right. Excellent. Uh, Kathy, thanks for your work being lots of help. Any pointers for Alley Doc on a spread axle flatbed? <laughs> uh, Kathy, uh, so a spread axle flat deck I'm taking, is that a 10-1 spread? Is that what you're talking about? So you're um, alley dock. Okay, so when you're talking about an alley dock, are you talking about backing into like a dock from an alley? Or are you, like I'm trying to visualize because I'm, I'm trying to get the language so that we're both on the same page. And I'll tell you why I'm asking you that. I had a customer call me up the other day and ask if I could do heavy haul training. <laughs> and I'm thinking two tractors, trailer with 75 tires on it. You can't have 75, you'd have to have 76 tires on it. 76 tires, you know, you got to permits and all this stuff. And I got all this going on in my head. And then I was talking to the client for a little bit. And then finally I realized they were talking about heavy trailer endorsement. They weren't talking about heavy haul. And I'm like, yeah, okay. Heavy haul, not so much in my wheelhouse. I can do it, but it's a little bit of a stretch for me. Now, heavy trailer endorsement, which is, you know, a trailer over 10,000 pounds with a pickup truck, that's totally in my wheelhouse. I can help you with that. So I just want to make sure that we're, we have the same language. AB, on the CDL rewrite, uh, we have to do 30 coach questions, 30 truck and 30 air brake questions instead of 20 each after 30 years of driving. Uh, and where are you, AB, that you're doing your uh, learner's license for your CDL? Where is that that, that, that they're doing that? Uh, Kathy, okay, 90 degree backing. Okay, so they're getting you to back around a corner to back into a dock. All right, so remember that your pivot point on the trailer is where the wheels go. Once you get it around, 
the middle of the wheels is your pivot point. So once you get the back of the trailer around and going in the direction that you want to go, you're probably going to have to pull up. You're probably going to have to pull up a couple of times because if you don't have a great deal of experience on a 90 degree back round, it's really tough to gauge that. It's really tough to gauge that. So don't beat yourself up if you have to pull up one or two times because it's tough to get it around there. And even experienced drivers, you know, there's kind of this myth that you, you don't need to pull up and blah, 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 rubbish. You know, I used to be really good at it, but you know, you got to remember I was backing up five or six times a day too. If I went to do it now, I'd probably have to pull up two, maybe even three times before I kind of got it around into the alley uh, dock to get it in where you need to go. And the other thing is, is that absolutely make sure that you back in from the driver's side. I can't emphasize that enough. Okay. And look for any landmarks on the, on the road surface or the pavement or wherever you're backing in so that you can keep your tires in those tracks. There's, there's going to be a painted line on there that'll line you up in the dock, or there's going to be, you know, kind of indentations in the concrete or in the, in the pavement that you're backing in on that allow you to, you know, be able to back around on the driver's side and watch the trailer tires as to where they're going and then getting that back corner of the trailer right into the dock. That'll, all of that'll really, really help you out with backing up. Okay. Uh, so AB, you're in Southern Ontario and we have to do 30 coach questions, 30 truck questions and 30 air brake questions. Okay. So when you're saying CDL, I'm assuming that you're talking about, if you're in Southern Ontario, uh, you're talking about your AZ license. Is that correct? You're talking about your AZ license, right? Okay, just confirm that for me. Uh, Jim, how many times can you take the driving test? Uh, as far as I know, Jim, there's no limit on how many times you can take the driver's test. Now, if somebody did come back to me, and maybe somebody here or somebody watching in the replay can confirm this for me. They said that in the state of Pennsylvania, you only get three tries on the test. I haven't heard from anybody or heard any information in kind of the traffic safety <laughs> you know, arena that it's three strikes and you're out. You don't ever get, you don't get to get a license and those types of things. Uh, so I don't know. Uh, I, I've never heard of that. I've never heard of a limit on how many driver's tests you can take. I, and I mean, I had somebody today who just <laughs> left a comment and said they just passed their driver's test on the 10th try. So I don't know. Okay. Uh, Kathy, you're going to do awesome. Test in three days. That's really great. Uh, Mallory, what is the one driving skill that people struggle with the most? Uh, the one skill that people struggle with the most, Mallory, is keeping space in front of their vehicle. If everybody could do that and keep that adequate, that good space in front of their vehicle, we'd be safer, smarter drivers. Crystal, how are you, my friend? Uriel, uh, thanks for your videos. I passed my road test on Wednesday. Your maneuverability advice helped me ace that part of my test. Excellent. So you're in Ohio. Congratulations on passing your test and passing the Ohio maneuverability test. That is really awesome. Epic. Uh, speaking of school lines, they're not created equal because in the U.S. and Canada, you're going to see both the fluorescent yellow green and the black on yellow. State manual only use the neon yellow. Yes. <laughs> You're absolutely right, Epic, that there's no consistency in the school signs. All right, so passing your driver's test. Head over to the Smart Drive Test website. Check out Pass Your Driver's Test First Time. It's a course that guarantees that you will pass your driver's test first time. Online course, all the information you need to pass both your learners and your practical test. And winter is coming as a bonus. We'll throw in both the winter driving and defensive driving smart courses for the price of about $37 US. You can pick that course up over at the Smart Drive Test website, guaranteed to pass your driver's test or we'll give you your money back. Okay, so check that out. Doug, uh, it always amazes me how many people don't know how to merge onto the highway. Doug, yes, we have lots of videos <laughs> about how to correctly merge onto the highway. Uh, yes, it confounds some people, absolutely, no doubt, okay? Uh, Turner, is the British Columbia knowledge test easy? I have my knowledge test in three days and I'm worried. Uh, Turner, head over to the Smart Drive Test website. On the right side, there's a menu and the 
pretty British Columbia practice driving test questions are there. It's not easy. There's a lot of terminology. There's some images and pictures and those types of things. So don't go in thinking that the theory test is going to be easy. And this isn't just for British Columbia. This is for every state in the US and all the other provinces here in Canada. Make sure that you do your homework and do the practice driving test questions. Don't read <laughs> the driving manual from cover to cover because it's boring. It's written by bureaucrats. Use the practice driving test questions online to figure out where the gaps are in your knowledge. So if you have some trouble with right of way and those types of things, go back to the driver's handbook and look up the sections you don't know and then go back and do the practice driving test questions. The practice driving test questions will teach you information that you may or may not know, especially if they're giving you feedback or giving you the right answers and those types of things. So do those, use those, okay? That will really help you out to get ready and be prepared for your learner's test. If you're getting 80 to 90% consistently on the online practice test, then you're more or less, you should be ready to take your theory test at your DMV or wherever your test center is going to be. Doug, uh, you're a great teacher. Always enjoy your videos, Rick. Thank you so much, my friend. That's awesome. Glad you enjoy the content here. Awesome. Uh, blessed, you have a white 2018 Honda Fit. There we go. Okay, so 2018. I knew it was white because you said you wanted a dark car. I remember I remember that part. <laughs> uh, excellent. Uh, uh, Jim, how many hours should you drive before you take your driving test? Uh, Jim, I generally recommend kind of six to eight weeks practice and preparation before you take your driver's test. Now, my friend Big Mac Sam is here. You did great merging onto the highway. <laughs> Thank you. It wasn't, it was the parkway, which New York has parkways, which are different than regular highways. Only cars can go on parkways. Uh, big trucks are limited to the freeways. And uh, yeah, the other thing, you know, Sam and I had this discussion. We did a mock driving test uh, when we were there in the Bronx. And one of the things that I want to emphasize to anybody who's getting ready and preparing for their driver's test, practice in and around the test center where you're going to be taking your test, your driving test, okay? You're not going to go on the exact roads and the exact route where you're going to be taking your test, but you will know about double park cars, for example. You will know where the school zones are. <laughs> and other, you know, turns that are kind of weird because there was a turn that Sam took me on that was a left-hand turn and it was an offset. It wasn't a conventional intersection. And of course, I didn't go straight enough into the intersection before I made the turn and I made the turn too short. And well, that's 10 points, okay? And if you're brand new to that, as I was, that you're not going to make that turn correctly and you're going to lose unnecessary points. Whereas if you go and practice in and around the test center where you're going to take your test, you're going to know that the examiner may get you to take a left-hand turn there and you're going to have to drive deep into the intersection before you make your turn and you're going to have to go slower so that you don't run over the center line. Because if you do run over the center line, you're going to be assigned 10 demerit points. So you need to know those kinds of nuances when you take your test. It's the same thing as if you take a test in high school or you take a test in university. <coughs> Excuse me. You're going to practice and study for the test that is going to be given to you. And it's the same thing with a driving test. You have to know exactly what's on the test. So practice in and around the test center where you're going to be taking your test. Uh, DC, how's the weather in BC? Any snow yet? Uh, it's getting pretty cold here. Uh, DC, it is getting pretty cold here. Uh, we have snow in the mountains where, you know, it's supposed to be. So we have snow in the mountains and it's, you know, it's in single, di single digits in the Celsius, which puts it around, you know, the kind of low 40s here. So it's pretty good. <laughs> uh, it's okay. She runs well. Lots of cargo space, good on gas and fun to drive. Yes, I'm sure the Honda Fits get awesome fuel mileage. I'm sure you're up around the high 40s, mid high 40s miles per gallon with that with that fit it's really great uh crystal i'm doing well how are you i am doing well in terms of my driving practices i also have this app on my phone called dmv 
Genie. It has practice test questions you can practice with for driving. Excellent. Awesome. Uh, Matt, Rick's videos helped me a lot, so I would recommend his videos 100%. Got my G2 in Ontario two months back, and I've been driving on the 401 with, with ease. Excuse me. That is awesome. Congratulations, Matt, on passing your driver's test. Sounds like the driving is going well. Awesome, awesome. Uh, L, on a road test that has both the school zone sign where the maximum is 40 and a maximum 50 sign, which rule do I follow? Uh, if school is in session L, then it's 40 kilometers an hour, okay? Know that, that you have to do the you know, the school speed zone and you need to figure out where the school speed zones are. And if you're not sure, you don't know, you need to figure that out either by going and asking somebody, maybe at the school or whatnot, but a driving instructor, a local driving instructor will be able to give you very specific information about the nuances of a driver's test. And I'll tell you when I, we did the mock driving test with Sam there in the Bronx, Sam knew exactly which roads that they took students on for their test. And he also knew the little nuances, <laughs> you know, of the offset corner and you were making the left-hand turn that you had to make that very wide. There was another uh, intersection where the, there, it was a traffic light, but the stop line, there was a sign way back, like almost a quarter of a block back from the intersection. And, and Sam's like, yeah, you got to stop here. And I was like, oh, well, I would never have known that. Uh, had Sam not pointed that out. So no, uh, you know, and I say this again and again and again, if you're not taking driving lessons with an examiner or with a driving school, get a practice driving test done with an instructor because the return on investment is huge. So know that, okay? Uh, Ryan, on Alberta, it's always 30 kilometers an hour from 7.30 to 9 p.m. every day even weekends between those times uh ryan do you have a source for that because i don't think that's true that that sounds excessive i mean why would they put 30 kilometers an hour on a weekend when school is not in session that doesn't make any sense it doesn't make sense i would i would need a source for that to confirm that uh evan if there are two left turn lanes i go into the left turn lane that's away from the middle of the road shall i be closer to the left line or in the center of the lane uh, Evan, if you're, if there's two left turn lanes, you want to be in the outside lane. So you want to be in the right turn lane to go around that way. When you get around the corner, you're going to be already in the right lane and not going to have to change lanes to the other side. Uh, Jane, if you don't have a car to practice driving and you only do 10 driving lessons, is it possible you can take your driving test? Uh, Jane, it is possible. Uh, your chances of success are not great because as I've said before, driving lessons with an instructor are designed that you take a driving lesson and then you practice driving five or six times. <coughs> and then you take another driving lesson with an instructor and then you practice another five or six times. This is, you know, it's like university is the way that driving lessons are set up. So if you just take 10 driving lessons with an instructor and that's all you have for a driving test, it's it's pretty iffy about whether you had enough practice or not to actually pass the test. I'm not saying it can't be done. There is a possibility, but if you could get some driving practice with somebody, it would make it a lot easier for you, okay? Uh, Wally, I just wanted to say, I think you're awesome. Thanks for being a fantastic teacher. And Wally, thank you for that compliment. <laughs> it's a great pleasure. I, I cannot tell you that it's just been really awesome that the Smart Drive Test channel has such a fantastic community. I go in and I see these long strings of comments of smart drivers encouraging each other and giving each other information back and forth about passing the driver's test. You know, the, you know, the best I can do to get in there and, and help people out as well. And, you know, weekly live streams and videos and those types of things, it's just been wildly more successful than I ever could have imagined. So thank you so much for that. Uh, uh, Nick, please give some tips on driving standard cars. Actually, Nick, I can give you a whole playlist of videos on how to drive standard cars. Now, and Corey will put that playlist up for you. Now, the one thing I want to tell you about driving standard cars is that learn where the friction point is. That's the point where the clutch engages, okay? Practice first and reverse 
if you can do first and reverse well, then the rest of the gears are fairly easy because the first and reverse are your hardest gears because you're overcoming inertia, okay? So know that. Uh, Corey's went and found the information for Alberta there, so thank you for that, Corey. Uh, when you pass this sign with a speed zone attached to the post, you have entered a school speed zone. It must stay within the maximum speed. Uh, the speed for both urban and rural schools is 30. Uh, time school days, 8 to 9.30 a.m., 11 a.m., Alberta Handbook. Yes, thank you for that source, uh, uh, Corey, because there's a lot of misinformation out there about school zones, and it's <laughs> it's only when school is in session. And and I I and I'm not saying that you're wrong. I'm saying that the handbooks are confusing because the handbook, especially I think it's Nova Scotia. I went in and looked at their handbook because a couple of smart drivers have come back to me and said. Oh, it's school zones are in, applicable all the time. And I looked at the handbook in the province of Nova Scotia and oh my God, is it convoluted. Even I'm like, okay, it kind of sounds like it's in all the time, but it's not. If you do really fine reading, eat close detail, it's not. It's only when school is in session. So most of the time, have another look at the handbook if somebody tells you that it's outside of school hours. Thank you so much for that, Corey. Uh, Medina, I've learned a lot from watching your videos. You're a great teacher. Thank you so much, Medina. That's awesome. Uh, Nick, thanks. Okay, so yeah, Nick. So going back to that friction point, first and reverse are going to be your toughest gears on the standard transmission. <coughs> AB, I've enjoyed your videos since I found them on Thanksgiving weekend. That's awesome. So happy that we can help you out. That is really great. Okay, excellent. So one of the things I wanted to talk about, <laughs> distracted driving. Because, you know, right now, <laughs> distracted driving is all the rage. We all, we're all, you know, it's, it's worse than drunk driving, distracted driving. And I want to tell you a couple of incidents of distract, <laughs> distracted driving that I've had in the last couple of months. So I'm driving with my girlfriend, we're going shopping and we're in the car and we go past my friend, Chris, who I do jujitsu with. And it, Chris is standing outside of his car, looking in his back window, talking to somebody in the back of his car. And Chris has a very nice Mercedes <laughs> sports car. So it's not hard to pick out my friend, Chris. And so I'm looking at my friend Chris, and what was weird about it was he's standing outside of his car talking to somebody in the back of the car. So I'm first, I'm distracted by the fact that Chris is standing on the side of the road talking to somebody in the back of his car. And then, so we go past the car, somebody pulls out in front of me, cuts me off, and <laughs> my girlfriend's, oh, what are you doing? <laughs> and I'm like, oh my God. Slam on the brakes, now she's all freaked out because I'm... You know, I've been distracted by this people, this person. And then, and then she's like, just turn here. And then, so I look in the turning lane, I shoulder check, look in the turning, and somebody just like screams up on the inside of me, you know, and, and like, <laughs> from the time I was distracted by my friend, Chris, it just kind of went downhill from there. And anyway, it kind of collected myself, got myself back together and wasn't distracted anything. So the other piece, and you'll see this in the video that I shot with Sam in the Bronx, we don't have double park cars. And for those of you who don't know what double park cars are, because you don't live in the big city, uh, it's just not a phenomena that we have here in the little town that I live in, in British Columbia. It's when there's a car parked along the curb and then somebody comes up and parks beside that car. So you have two cars, the cars are parked too deep along the curb. That's double park cars. And this is a common thing in New York, <laughs> in New York City and in the, in the boroughs. And... So we're driving up to this intersection. There's a double parked car right at the intersection. And I'm looking at the double parked cars. We're driving fast. And it wasn't just a double parked car. The car was actually up on jack stands. So, and the tires were off it. It wasn't going anywhere. There was a, a mechanic shop <laughs> right there. And they were obviously working on the car. They done something to it on a Friday afternoon and they put it, left it up on jack stands and there it was double parked out in the road. And I was like, well, that's really weird as we're driving past this thing. And of course 
The other thing about the five burrows is you can't turn right on a, on a red light, which kind of throws me. And of course, so I get up to the intersection. I saw that it was yellow and I was going to just come up and stop and then turn right. <laughs> of course, Sam starts laughing because he's like, you just failed your driver's test. Because I was distracted by the double parked car because it was something just out of the ordinary. But you know, when traffic authorities are talking about distracted driving, distracted driving this and distracted driving that, they're talking about phones, right? They're talking about people eating in their car and those kinds of things. And for me, distracted driving is things that are out of the ordinary that we're not really looking for. So there you go. There's the thing about distracted driving that I want to talk to you about is, is that be on the kind of alert that it's the things that are a little bit off that are going to distract you when you're driving. It's not so much your phone and not so much you know, eating and drinking and those types of things. It's the things that you kind of don't expect that are going to throw you. Okay, uh, Jason, know anything on trucker shortages? I see conflicting information. Okay, so Jackson, uh, we've had a driver shortage for, well, ever since I started driving truck. Uh, ever since the 1970s, there's been a driver shortage. And I would argue that there's not a driver shortage. There's a driver retention problem. That's what I would say. So, and if you want to send me an email, uh, we could <laughs> we we could have a deeper discussion about that. Uh, Sam says you're a great storyteller, Rick. <laughs> Thanks so much, Sam. But it was just you know I was thinking about that later, and I'm like I'm distracted by this car, not because it's double parked, because it's on jack stands and double parked, which was great. Uh, epic. In some parts of the United States, school and residential speed limits are the same, 20 to 30, 25 miles an hour in metric, yep, except for a state highway through a school zone, which is uh, 30 to 45 miles per hour. Yeah, and it's, you know, it's different all over the place, Epic, that's for sure. Okay, uh, Emmanuel, I have a test on Friday. May God be with me, and yes, God bless you. You're going to do awesome, Emmanuel, on your driver's test there. Awesome. And Doug says, I hate when people tailgate me when I'm doing the speed limit. Yeah. And unfortunately, Doug, that's going to happen when you're driving the speed limit because as we know, there's a traffic flow and traffic is always driving, you know, 10 kilometers an hour above the posted speed limit or five to eight miles an hour above the posted speed limit, depending on where you are. Unfortunately, the speed doing the posted speed limit is going to put you as one of the slowest vehicles on that section of roadway. All right, so one more time, pass your driver's test first time over at the Smart Drive Test website. Be sure to have a look at that. Uh, guaranteed to pass your driver's test right out of the gate as well because winter's coming and some of us are going to get snow, especially in all the northern states and here in Canada. Uh, we uh, throw in as a bonus both the winter and defensive driving smart courses. And if you're in a place that doesn't get snow, all of the skills and techniques and abilities in the winter and defensive driving course will help you to drive in inclement weather, drive at night, know what kinds of traffic crashes you're most prone to. And just on that note, if you have a choice between a head-on crash and a sideswipe crash, pick the sideswipe crash every time because very seldom are sideswipe crashes fatal, whereas a head-on crash almost every time is going to be fatal. All right? So, check that out. Guarantee to pass your driver's test first time. That's what we do. That's what we help you out. Pass the driver's test. Become a safer, smarter driver. Or start a career as a truck or bus driver. AB, I see about 20 people a shift when I'm driving on the 407 on their phone, including police officers. And yes, <laughs> cell phones are definitely a problem with distracted driving. Now, police officers and emergency workers can use cellular phones and other electronic devices in the course of their job, okay? So that it's written, written right in the legislation that they're able to use electronic devices while they're driving, okay? Johnny, your videos help me a lot. Uh, looking forward to next Sunday's live stream. And next Sunday's live stream is on winter driving. So be sure to tune in for that next week. We're going to be talking about winter driving keeping you safe uh, for the winter time in the snow and slippery conditions and those types of things. And I know Blessed doesn't have to deal with that, but she will have to deal with some rain and whatnot. So it'll help you out with all of that. 
Sam here in New York, the DMV uh, recommends at least 50 hours of driving before taking a road test. And Sam, I recommend the same, uh, that you need at least 50 hours behind the wheel in order to be confident in your abilities and skills to take a driving test and pass. Now, I usually kind of say six to eight weeks, and in six to eight weeks, yes, you can in fact get 50 hours of driving time before you take your driver's test. And I do, I am in on that and concur with that, that you should have 50 hours behind the wheel. And one other thing, and I posted this today on one of the social media posts, be sure that you can turn on the windshield wipers, the defrost, and the high low beams as the secondary controls. You should be able to turn on those three secondary controls at minimum, and Corey will put up the video for you on secondary controls in the vehicle. And when I say secondary controls, these are all kind of the controls in the vehicle that don't make it go, okay? So the primary controls in the vehicle are the steering wheel, the brake, and the throttle or the gas pedal, okay? And if you're driving a manual transmission, it's gonna be the clutch too. Everything else is secondary controls, okay? Your windshield wipers, your defrost, and high low beams, okay, for your headlights. Now, most of the headlights on most newer vehicles are going to be uh, automatic. They're gonna come on automatically, but you're still gonna need to know how to turn on the high low beams, okay? And usually it's on the blinker switch. You push it away from you to turn on your high beams and then pull it towards you to turn on the low beams, to activate the low beams again, all right? So know that. Uh, Johnny, I'm in Canada and I haven't driven in snow yet, so that will be helpful. <laughs> yes, we're gonna help you do that. One guy, what happens when I'm at an intersection and get a green light, but the person across from me also gets a green light, but is turning, who goes first? Okay, so one guy, right of way rules, straight through traffic over turning, right turning traffic over left turning. These are general rules, okay? Now, if the person across from you has an advanced green, they have the right of way, <clears throat> but you will be facing a red light, okay? So that's the only time. So, and I did a video two weeks ago, I think, on how do you know if the cross traffic, the opposing traffic rather, has an advanced green. Uh, have a look at that video and that'll help you out to know if the traffic on the other side has an advanced green and you can uh, turn right on a red light. All right, so that'll help you out. <clears throat> All right, lots of people. Con, uh, thanks, Rick, for all your videos and tips. Always great to continue to watch and be a safe driver. Uh, good luck, everyone, on your road tests. Have a good night. Good night, my friend. All the best. All right, we're getting near the end here. Vax mandates for truckers. Uh, Jackson, I don't know what the manda mandates are in terms of vaccines, and I really don't want to get in. It's kind of outside the scope of what I want to do here. Okay? <laughs> don't want to try not to... You know, driving's already political enough. <laughs> we don't want to get more political. Yeah, let's be more political. Let's just throw in COVID and who should be vaccinated and who should have a passport. <laughs> no, 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 no. Let's not go there. Uh, Mallory, really enjoyed your videos. I find them very helpful and I've become a much smarter passenger. So thank you for your videos and you're a great teacher. Awesome. Thank you so much, Mallory, for that. That is really great. <laughs> Glad we can help out. Uh, one guy, does the green arrow go first or solid green? Uh, one guy, it's going to depend a little bit where you are. I have seen some intersections where there will be a green light first and then the advanced green, but those are rare. Usually it's the advanced green first and then the solid green for people to go through, okay? Uh, Doug, do you find billboards distracting? Doug, sometimes I do. I have found billboards that are distracting. For the most part, not so much because uh, billboards are generally located in one area, so I don't find them great, tremendously distracting. Uh, I, as I said, I find things out of the usual. <laughs> My friend Chris standing beside his Mercedes Benz on the side of the road, that's distracting. Uh... Raj, thank you for your information. All are so clear. Awesome. So happy we can help out. Uh, Nick, should you use the entire merge lane when moving on to the on-ramp or get over when up to speed? Uh, Nick, at the beginning, I do recommend that you use the entire acceleration lane. 
but after you get some experience and you're able to pick your gap, aim for your gap, and get into that gap, then no, you don't have to use it. But in the beginning, I do suggest you use it all just so you're a little more comfortable getting out onto the highway and freeway. Uh, Nick, should you use the... Okay, we already answered that question. Awesome. Controlled intersections. Corey put up that video. That's great. Uh, thank you so much, Sam, my friend. And we'll get that in, we'll get those videos uh, clips down to you so you have some of that for your channel and whatnot. And definitely check out Big Mac Sam's check out, uh, channel, <laughs> YouTube channel here. Uh, Corey will put up the link for that as well. Uh, AB, I wish I took a truck driving course when I upgraded from my DZ. Uh, I don't know if or how many bad habits I have. Uh, AB, if you can get like one driving lesson with an instructor, that'll really help you out. Uh, how to adjust the mirror in the proper way. I'm struggling on it. Uh, Raj, Corey will put the video up for you on eight steps to adjust your vehicle and get going there. Uh, and Doug, yes, I like roundabouts. The more of them, bring them on. They're awesome. All right, so we're going to leave it there for tonight. Thank you so much for tuning in. Thank you so much for all your questions and participation. It's been absolutely awesome. You passed your driver's test in the last couple of weeks. Congratulations. And if you have a driver's test coming up here in the next week or so, good luck on that. And remember, pick the best answer. Not necessarily the right Pizza! answer. Have a great night. Yeah, okay. Goofy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, nobody can see you over there. I really don't care. You. Uh, yeah, okay. You're being weird. I'm not sure. What? I learned it from Gotcha Life. It's cool. No, it's not cool. Okay. Move your butt. Okay. All right. No. Go. <sighs> go. Go gyrate somewhere else. All the best, everybody. Have a great night. Bye now. Yes. That's my goofy daughter, Scout. Wee! I want pie. Well, go and have pie. Well, you cut it. You cut it. It's not me cutting.